On behalf of the worldwide church's leadership, I'd like to say how delighted we are to share with you in this IYF and how excited we are that many of you are continuing on this journey by going to Spectacular. And many of us will be sharing with you in that experience too. So we're looking forward to it. At the same time, I'm a little bit sad. Because there are youth from various nations of the church who wanted to be here, but they can't be here. They can't be here because of a lack of funding, and they can't be here because of border crossing policies that don't allow them to enter this country. They live in Africa, they live in Haiti, they live in Central and South America, and other nations of the world. I will never forget the first IYF when the large delegation from Africa taught us the song, was anyone here, Humble Yourselves Before the Lord. And what a magnificent moment it was here in this temple sanctuary when we all shared together in that experience. So I'm remembering that this afternoon, along with sharing in the joy and excitement of this experience. I'd like to ask you to do something with me. I don't know how it works, but I'd like to pause, I'd like for us to pause for just a moment and think about them and say in your mind and heart in a prayerful way and send it out with the energy of the Spirit these words. You are not forgotten. Let's pause and each one say that silently. Thank you for doing that. Our theme is Look Beyond the Horizon. That theme comes from Doctrine and Covenants, section 161, paragraph 1a. Lift up your eyes and fix them on the place beyond the horizon to which you are sent. Journey in trust, assured that the great and marvelous work is for this time and for all time. That phrase, the great and marvelous work, is one that has been used in the church from the earliest days of our movement. It's one of the ways we describe our amazing adventure with God as God is using the church to fulfill God's purposes in the world. But here is a truth. Whatever is beyond the horizon that we are calling to lift up our eyes and see in this moment will only be seen when we are already moving towards the horizon. You cannot see beyond the horizon standing still. You have to be moving already toward the horizon to see what is waiting to be seen. The church is a community of faith and hope 
founded, formed, and led by God's Spirit. And that Spirit is calling us right now into the future that God has in mind for each of you, for us together, for the whole church, and for the world. And God is calling us to go beyond what we can see, the visible horizon, where God is already creating that future and waiting to see who will come. Now, people will try to discourage you from going beyond the seen horizon. Some don't like new challenges, new understandings, and the necessary change that comes with increased clarity. They say, we've already arrived. There's nothing more to discover. And I say to you, don't believe them. That's what people said to Abraham and Sarah, our ancient faith ancestors. But Scripture says, and I quote from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8, by faith Abraham obeyed when he was called, and he set out not knowing where he was going. But he went. We are the spiritual children of Abraham and Sarah. When Jesus proclaimed God's vision for changing the world, his friends and neighbors and some family members said, you're crazy. And they pushed him to the edge of a cliff and were going to throw him off. But Jesus proclaimed, I have a vision. God is moving, and things are turning around for the poor, the sick, the brokenhearted. And we are disciples of Jesus Christ who are called with him to keep turning it around. In the book of Acts, chapter 17, Jesus' disciples were described this way. The people who are turning the world upside down. And we, all of us, are the descendants of those first radical disciples of Jesus. It's kind of like the poem, The Explorers, by Kipling. All of the people around the explorers said, there's no sense in going further, adding, we are already at the edge of all that is. But in the next verse of the poem, the explorer responds by saying, A voice persisted in my heart, an everlasting whisper. And the eternal voice said, Something hidden. Go and find it. Something hidden. Go and find it. And so he went and he journeyed courageously He overcame many obstacles. He went into unfamiliar areas, and he discovered. He experienced the joy of exploration and discovery, discovering more than had ever been seen or even supposed before. One author wrote, 20 years from now, 
you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the ones you did. Now, don't take that too far. <laughs> but the point is, and I'll continue with this author's statement, sail away. Sail away from the safe harbor, he writes. Catch the trade winds in your sails. Explore, dream, discover. Ships are safe in the harbor, but that's not what ships are for. God is calling us to the great and marvelous adventure we call community of Christ. Our vision is of a church and a world in which the worth of all persons is respected and celebrated. Our vision is of a church and a world in which the power of inclusive community through Christ's love is experienced by all. Our vision is the elimination of poverty and unnecessary suffering locally and globally. Our vision is one in which peace prevails. This temple is dedicated to the pursuit of that vision. Do you sense that call stirring in you? Do you have a growing desire to go into God's future and discover it? Do you have ideas about what the church can be as we continue into that future? Do you feel deep concern and well-being for others, for the well-being of others and the whole creation? That, those feelings, those stirrings, that restlessness is God's Spirit calling you. Pay attention. To those feelings. As stated in Doctrine and Covenants 163, 4b, God is calling for new generations of disciples to work on the problems of poverty, disease, war, and the well-being of the earth and its atmosphere. And in the same section, God promises that your contributions will be multiplied if your hearts are focused on God's will for creation. And God's will is mercy and justice and equality and well-being and peace for all and the whole creation. In just a few moments, we'll share in the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, or communion. This sacrament has many meanings associated with it. The one that I want to emphasize is the call to each one of us, the call to you, to discover your future with Jesus Christ. There's an old story about explorers on a journey of discovery. They were following a guide on a well-marked trail. But at one point, the trail disappeared into the jungle undergrowth 
and trees. And one of the travelers, quite distressed, said to the guide, There is no path. Where is the path? And the guide responded, From now on, I am your path. Follow me. And the guide surged ahead, making a path where none existed before. Today, in this sacred place, Jesus says, follow me, I am your path. Now, if you're looking for the safe and predictable, don't. Don't do it. Don't follow Jesus Christ. But, if you want to discover who you really are and what the real purpose of your creation, what the real purpose of your life is, take these emblems as a symbol of your willingness and desire to follow Jesus Christ into the future. And if you're looking to discover a guiding vision for your life, a vision of how to make a better world with others, then receive these emblems as an expression of your commitment to Christ's vision and mission. And if you're looking to discover what is beyond the horizon, for you and the church, take these emblems as an expression of your faith and hope and willingness to trust the living Christ further than you can see. Something hidden Go and find it. Go.